everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to part two of my To the Moon Let's Play. So we were introduced to all the characters, Eva and Neil, who go into people's memories and grant them wishes before they die. We are introduced to Johnny, who wants to go to the moon. So we're going back into his memories to see why he wants to go to the moon. We briefly learned about his wife, River, and kind of the issues that they've had. And uh, we're just going to continue on and learn more, and I'll try not to cry. <laughs> so let's get into it. Okay, so that's right. We started off with Johnny telling River, or left off, I should say, with Johnny telling River that so they've got enough money that they can build a house here so that they can look over the lighthouse, which I'm pretty sure is Anya. Like, I'm pretty darn sure that's what she's referring to, which is very sweet, but knowing, you know, what's going to happen later, it's quite sad, quite bittersweet. Wait a minute. They were referring to the lighthouse as Anya, weren't they? I suppose so. Then, that river, she declined treatment for the sake of a lighthouse? Isn't that a bit too extreme? I've seen stranger things in the course of the job. Me too, but ugh, I can never wrap my head around it. It's none of our business anyway. She's not our client. Okay, just gonna get myself reoriented with these controls. Oh! Hopefully Neil doesn't see another squirrel he wants to fight. <laughs> Alright, perfect. We've got everything we need. Now I just gotta find the memento. Uh, oh, probably this, right? Yep. Here's the thing with the rabbits. I want to find out. That's a big thing, is why is River so obsessed with rabbits? All right, ideal five. Well, we'll see about that. Still feel like I can't quite wrap my head around exactly how to do this. Okay, that wasn't too bad. River? Alright, so now we're going a little further back. Seems like kind of like middle age right now. Yellow paper rabbit. Dear lord, not again. I'm sure they're as curious as I am about what the rabbits are all about. Old baby grand piano. How the heck did they move this thing upstairs? Who knows, but I bet it'd be a piece of cake for the TARDIS. Not really, you can't even get it through its door. Hmm, true. Well, that settles it. Moving pianos is a pain in the arse for everybody. It'd probably take an entire episode to get it inside. I wouldn't mind seeing such an episode. Me neither. Sounds pretty epic. New boxes of plain paper. Uh-oh, I think I know where this is going. I was gonna say, it's like, uh, Eva and Neil, they seem to kind of drive each other crazy, but they seem to have some, uh, you know, some similar tastes and things, so I think they like each other. Oh, boy. You went out for a haircut this early in the morning? What are you making there? So is this the beginning of it? And there's the platypus again. Rabbits. Did you see the rabbit I left for you? Yeah, so... I don't know how far back this is before she was diagnosed, so maybe this doesn't have anything to do with her eventual illness? It's very... strange. I'd be concerned too. Tell me about that rabbit. 
Huh? Describe the rabbit. Oh, boy, and she was doing the same thing when she was uh, sick. She gave him that rabbit and like, uh, you know, tell me about the rabbit. So this has been something that's been going on for a while. Uh, it was yellow. What else? A bit puffy? And? Oh boy, this is just like that. So she never really let that go, did she? Well, it's just a paper rabbit. I don't know how else to describe it. You're acting strange, River. Is something wrong? River. I am so curious about this. I don't know about you, but I'm getting some inverse deja vu. I think I know of her condition, but this is rather odd even for that, so... I mean, it was pretty implied in the last episode that she has some sort of... Um, maybe autism, but it's like the fixation on things. I'm, I'm wondering if that's what Rosaline is talking about. You think she's... Do you? Perhaps. Who knows? I like the fact it's implied. They don't say it straight up, but... You just kind of have to infer based on, you know, the information you're given. But, like you said, she's not our client. Let's just get what we're paid uh, for over with. I'd be terrible at this job, because I would be like, I want to I wanna find out what's going on here. I would be too nosy. Many long strands of orange hair... Oh, is there... What's going on? Oh, maybe her hair was falling out? We talked about how she got a haircut? Mary, hmm. Just a whole lot of questions I have. So this is the day she started it, huh? Yeah, so far I am, like, really intrigued by this story. I'm really liking it so far. It's like a mix of humor, but also sadness, and also, like, there's that mystery there. You want to find out what's going on. Yay, I actually got- <laughs> I got it by the amount that it said I should have it by. Where are you guys? Where are they? Oh, this is where the house used to be, isn't it? A house that never should have been. I mean, really, what is it about unusually high and dangerous places that attract people? Oh. <laughs> that, oh, speaking of which, yes, uh, the notes. I have, I've got to check the notes. So Anya, the abandoned, abandoned lighthouse by the cliffside. Clock. The clock in Johnny's house never ticks. Ooh. I'm wondering, maybe, is that maybe something, um, River, she doesn't like the ticking of a clock, so maybe she asks him to, like, remove the, the, the ticking sound? Moon. Objective. The moon in Johnny's memory is full. Pickled olives, Johnny's favorite. Paper rabbit, what River gave to John. <laughs> Acrophobia. Something that Johnny and River apparently don't have. All right, so then we got the characters. All right, so there we are. So, I've checked the notes. Can't believe I totally forgot about how to, you know, about doing that. Not a lot of new information gleaned from that, but, you know, always something that I want to check.
Is this why you approached me back then? Or is that why? Sorry, is that why you approached me back then? Yeah. What about now? I suppose it's just a part of it. Look, it was a long time ago. It's not too relevant now, but Izzy said I should tell you the truth. I shouldn't have tainted our first meeting like that. What is that? A hacky sack? Can you throw this as far as where Anya's at? I don't know. You want me to try? Would you? River! Are you insane? Get away from there! I think this memory isn't too far from the last. Think they may be connected? Probably. Ooh, interesting. So something about the first meeting, he approached her for some reason, and apparently it wasn't maybe a great meeting, considering he said, you know, I'm sorry I tainted our meeting, like our first time meeting like that. Okay, so alright. I'm missing one, though. Why did she cut her hair anyway? I like long hair. Huh, okay, and then there's this whole thing about the haircut. I th I figured maybe because there was hair in the, um, in the, like, waist bin, uh, maybe she was losing her hair, so she figured she just cut it anyway. Oh, and there's the, there's the backpack. Oh boy, this one's not going nearly as well as as the last time. Here we go. Everyone with it is different, John. Just because she and I share the syndrome doesn't mean we share the same head. Okay, so that's what I was saying in the last episode is uh, when when Isabel referred to um, John as neurotypical, I was like, does Isabel have the, uh, you know, does she have the issue? Issue, God, that's, sorry, not, not the right way to put it. Does she have the condition or does... River have the condition, and I guess they both do. But you must be able to help somehow. Everything was okay at first, but now she's even more aloof than before. Even when we're in the same room, she's never really there. It's starting to take a toll on me. I just don't know how to take it anymore. Well, I can't speak for her, but many of us do long for connections. Though, being able to articulate it is a different story. Just because she struggles to express it, it doesn't mean she doesn't feel anything. She's still there, right? Sometimes you just have to have faith that she cares. It's pretty difficult to do, day in and day out. I know. Wait, but why do you seem so normal, Izzy? I mean, don't you have the same condition? For one, I was diagnosed when I was still young. With effort, it's not impossible to acquire a guise of so uh, social norms systematically. But you know what? I both envy and pity River. Me? I'm an actress because I've been doing it all my life. Not only on stage, but off stage, and at practically every moment. I've gotten good at it because acting is the only option I have. It's the only way for me to be normal. But River, she never did that. She remained an outcast and refused to learn to step against it. I don't know if it was by choice or by limit, whether bravery or cowardice. There are days when I just can't stand faking it anymore. 
and then I realize it's too late. The Isabel that people know of is all an act, and the real me has long become a stranger. I think in the end, I just envy her, the fact that River is just her own person and she doesn't care what people think about her and she's able to be her real self. Huh, never met a woman with it before. Then technically, you still haven't met one. This isn't part of our business. Let's move. Once again, I guess I would just be too nosy to uh, work in this kind of thing, being able to go into people's Memories? I would want to explore it all. The world would be a lot more beautiful if people just remembered faces more. Anything new today? No. What are you rereading there? The Emperor's New Clothes. Oh, yes. Okay. So the book wasn't necessarily important to John. It was a book that River liked. I loved this when I was young. Still do, huh? Of course. Just for different reasons. When I was a kid, I loved the Animorph series. Same, John. Same. I know, your mother gave you a book for it as a wedding present. I'm like, how, 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 like, in what universe is this? Is this, like, way in the future? Because I'm like, how old are Animorph books? Like, I remember those when I was a kid, but I'm like, assuming, you know, Johnny's an old man, he's in, I don't know how old he is, but it's like, Animorph books when he was a kid, I have to assume he was like, if this is taking place in present times, and this game is, like, a couple of years old at this point, like, I, I'm just confused by the timeline, like, how, if we're in the future. Because, like, I think Animorphs is, like, it's a 90s thing. I don't know. Yeah, that was one of- that was one odd wedding present. I guess I was pretty obsessed with it when I was a kid. Why haven't you read them since? Hmm? I saw them. They're collecting dust in the garage. Well, I just grew out of them, I guess. I mean, they're children's books. What's wrong with reading children's books? They're comforting. I suppose so. I think I'm going to get this one. I'm sort of on River's side about it and sort of on John's side about it. Like, there are certain things I still go back to from when I was a kid, but part of me is like, I don't want to go back to them because I'm afraid it's going to ruin the good you know, memories I have them, if I, like, reread them, or, like, old games I played when I was a kid, and be like, oh, this is actually trash. <laughs> so it kind of, like, loses its gleam a little bit. But I have, I have a small selection of books that I do, I'll go back and reread. I don't know if the Animorph books would hold up, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, so I still have a couple more to go here. I'm not yours, you're not mine. Be my anti-Valentine. Hey, River, this one's not that corny. River? Well, what about David? He's my favorite character. Uh, I don't know. What are you talking about? Animorphs? Have you read it? No. Yes. <laughs> really? Sort of. Oh, oh, do you know what animal is David's main morph? Um, oh crap, uh, uh, I don't know. Oh shoot, okay. So it's, uh, I, okay, um, I'm gonna Google this. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing I'm probably gonna have to, like, explore around the bookstore and see, but uh, I'm gonna cheese it and I'm just gonna look it up. So, hold on just a moment. <laughs> Alright, so looking this up online, it's funny because uh, when I look up David's main morph, it just immediately goes to things about this game, which makes sense. Apparently, the technical answer should be lion, but it's supposed to be cobra. 
So, yeah, we're gonna do that. I never would have guessed that. Okay. Oh yeah, a cobra. I really wish they kept the old covers instead of these plain sheets. Those were cool. Oh, the power of Google. Tobias, Hawk, Rachel, Grizzly, Jake, Tiger, Marco, Gorilla, David, Cobra, uh, Cassie, Wolf. Why? Oh, I could have just gone to River and asked her. Oh. Oh, just wondering. You could have just Googled it. <laughs> I did. I did Google it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, right, so. I've got to find. Oh, uh, where is the memento, though? Shoot. Uh, oh, I feel dumb. I can't... I don't know where the memento is. Can I... Oh, right there. Okay. <laughs> I kind of want to go and read some Animorphs. I, I I read a little bit of Animorphs. My big thing was Goosebumps when I was a kid. That that was my shit. Was was Goosebumps. I have reread some Goosebumps. They hold up. I'm just saying that right now. <laughs> oh, everyone's leaving already. But I just got here. Seems to happen to you a lot at parties. Oh, go save your childish jabs for the insecure. I'm still of the mind these two like each other. It's like, you know, you can't have throw jabs at each other like that without there, you know, without there being a little bit of something there. Glass bottle of pickled olives. I see La Fromage, but where's the mouse? That's the corniest remark you've made all night. Don't you mean cheesiest remark? Wow. <laughs> Okay, where am I supposed to go here? Oh my gosh, they look so young! Look at them little babies. But, what? Nothing? Nothing at all? There we go, I was like, that can't be it, right? Some, something's gotta happen here. Do you feel any different? Now that we got the rings on, oh, this is their wedding. That's right, they said they had the wedding at the lighthouse. No. <laughs> Why, do you? Actually, yeah, I think so. I was kind of a river when I, when we got married. It's funny, Mark and I were the same way. I was like, I don't feel any different. That's, be that's because we were going out for like... Like, eight years before we got married? So for me, it was just like, oh, okay, cool, we're married now. But Mark was like, no, when we after we got married, it, it did feel different, so. What is it like? It's just different. And I feel like I have heard that um, between, like, my girlfriends and my guy friends when they get married. It's funny, it actually seems like the guys do feel... They feel like something has changed in the relationship after they get married more than my girlfriends, which you wouldn't think so, but I don't know. Just the responsibilities, I suppose. Responsibilities. Do you like the name Anya?
Would you like to name her Anya? I understand. When she first said that, I was thinking maybe it was going to be a situation where, like, maybe Anya was a name picked out for, like, if they were to have a baby. And then they couldn't have a baby, so they decided to name it the Lighthouse Anya instead. But I guess not. It was always about the Lighthouse. Yeah, Anya's a good name for her. Hey, come with me. Aww, this can't be a good idea. I'll probably trip and fall. Don't worry, just follow my steps. Oh, that's so cute! Ah, Just all the sadder knowing what happens at the end. <laughs> Ow, my ass! <laughs> I think you stepped on my toes. Sorry. Come on, let's try again. Aw, to promise to love and comfort, to honor and to keep in sickness and in health for as long as you shall live. I do. And do you take this man standing before you to be your lawfully wedded husband? To promise to love and comfort, to honor and to keep in sickness and in health for as long as you shall live. Yes. <laughs> Aw. By the power invested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Wiles. Ah, the what? I was waiting for him to make some sort of remark about like, uh, gross. Uh, yeah, what did you think that was? I'm just bad at weddings, that's all. Fluids tend to escape from my eyes. I didn't know you were that sentimental. Oh, did I say my eyes? I meant my mouth. And by fluids, I mean both fluids and solids. Ew. That's a lovely image. Thanks, Neil. Come, let's find a way to get out of here. All this happiness and joy is really putting you off too, huh? No, I just don't like watching people make mistakes. Sheesh, whatever happened to just take it moment by moment? Dang, that was, uh, I guess uh, she's got some feelings about this relationship. Alright. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, I better go see how your aunt is doing. All right, Ma. Tell her thanks for coming. I will. I'm so proud of you, Joey. Joey? Well, what? Oh, that's my grandpa's name. He passed away before I was born. My Ma calls me by it as my nickname. How come you never told me about it? Because I'd rather you call me John. Ugh, not another sentimental grandparent childhood. What do you have against those anyway? I mean, you sure talk about your grandfather a lot. What? No, I don't. Whatever you say. I'm so proud of Joey. All right, let's check the notes really quick, because we do have a couple of new ones here. Animorphs, Johnny's favorite childhood books, Joey, Johnny's nickname named after his grandfather. Hmm. 
Okay, I'm missing something. I'm missing one more here. Oh, we got something down here. Oh. I can't be helped, River. I'm sure they didn't mean to. Come on, we're late. Wait, is that a rabbit? Oh boy, is this where it all started? I think this is the source of all those folded paper ones. Why would she obsess over some roadkill? Not to mention so many years later. Don't ask me, you're the woman here. I'll be convinced that I'm the only one when you do a cordless bungee jump. Obviously it's a pretty powerful memory though. To have it be the memento. You know it's a fantastic wedding when the memento is roadkill, right? It's like this is the thing that they're stuck on as the memory of their whole wedding and it's just some roadkill. Is the, is the big thing that he remembers from it. Hey, maybe she saw it as a metaphor for the terrible marriage. So years later she began folding the rabbits because she was reminded of how rotten it was. Or, you know, something equally pretentious. Cool story, Neil. <laughs> Well, bad to say, it's not a terrible marriage. It's like, that seems a little harsh. Yeah, there's obviously some issues there, but they obviously loved each other. Kind of sad for Eva to call the whole thing a mistake. Poor thing, what's with all the roadkill today? Don't you look at me like that. It smells like a farm. And roadkill. Deactivate the scent simulator or get away from here already. Nope, oh, okay, we want to go this way. Whoa! Don't do it! <laughs> Don't do what? You know what. Don't not ride this horse? What are you, five years old? I am on Neil's side. There is a horse. It is available for riding. You ride the horse. Okay, I won't not ride it. <laughs> yeah, Neil. That's why you're my favorite character. Quit wasting time, Neil. Oh, crap. <laughs> that can't be good. Ah, do something. Don't just stand there. Help me. <laughs> Damn it. This was not in the job description. Okay, I gotta see what this note is about Neil. That he can't <laughs> village it. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. We'll help Neil eventually. I'm like, is there anything else around here? There's gotta be a reason we're here. Oh my gosh, there they are. Finally, right at the side. Oh, and look, there's a horse available for me to ride. Heck yes. Is that really a good idea? She should be okay. She's not new to this anymore. But she's never done it by herself before. I'll be fine. I'm not a child. Ah! Ack! River! What's the matter? Let's go! Hey, wait up! Oh, this makes me want to go horseback riding. It's been years since I've done that. I wonder if Neil got off that horse yet. Eva! 
<laughs> this is about 19% more than I can handle. What a moron. Better go save his bum. <laughs> oh, okay. Hold space to gallop. I don't know. Oh, oh. This okay. This is a little. Takes some getting used to. Do I have to like run into Neil? Like, how, what do I do? All right. Where are you, buddy? Okay, that's not him. Oh, god, there's multiple horses here. Okay, so I have to- Okay, so I've run into them enough. It seems I've got all the uh, orbs I need, but now I gotta go save Neil. Where the heck is Neil? Oh, there he is! Ah! Get back here, Neil. What am I supposed to do? There we go. Okay, wow. Thanks! <laughs> Ow. Hey, I found something here. Oh, buddy. Oh, there you are. Okay. Now, how do I get off this horse? Here, this memento will do. You'll have to line it up carefully with that horse, though. Don't look at me. I'm not getting on that beast again. Or I could just get off the horse, but I guess not. Alright. Oh, okay. There we are. Oh, that was, uh, that was quite interesting. It's nice to see uh, River and Johnny having, you know, a good time and just enjoying themselves. And we're going quite far back in this episode. Very- oh, wow. Oh my gosh, they're so young. They're like, what, teenagers? Wow, I'm going, yeah, pretty far back. I wonder, is the diagnosis certain? Yes, we've reached a consensus on the results. Or maybe not a teenager, but pretty young, like young adults. Unfortunately, like many cases of pervasive developmental disorders, this is a rather late diagnosis. Had you known when you were a child, miss, it could have saved you a lot of trouble. Do you have any books on it? This one by Tony Atwood. He's one of the specialists on the subject. You can borrow it free of charge for now, just don't elope with it. I'm gonna look that up and see if that's an actual person, probably. Oh my gosh, look at that, I just looked it up. So, oh. Yep, he is a British psychologist notable for his work on Asperger's. Okay. I kept saying that she, I kept saying maybe autism, but Asperger's, okay. Alright. That's really cool though, that they have like all of these little references, and then if you want, you can look it up and learn more about it, but all of these kind of real-world references. Thanks, Doc. Now, are you two a couple? Unmarried and without any other current legal affiliation. How, how romantic, River. Yes, I see. Well, I could give you a referral to a specialized counselor if you wish. Is there anyone, uh, is there anything unsettling in the relationship? No. And you, sir? No, it's fine. Oh, he wants to say something, but she's right there. Nonetheless, sir, you should also give the book a read. It will help you understand her condition. I'd rather not. Why is that? Well, it's your call. It's like he's in denial about it, and he's just like, if I don't learn more- I don't know. I mean, oh, in the meantime, there's a thing called equine therapy that might help her, and that's why they were out riding the horses. Oh, I mean, he seemed like he wanted to learn more about it. You know, he was, like, asking Isabel about it, and he seemed to be trying, but right now I guess he's kind of in a little bit of shock, and he's just in denial. 
A ranch just north of here offers it. I can contact them for you. Like, it really did seem like Johnny tried, you know? I told you so. That's just really cool, though. It's like that they give you these little hints about these things before it's revealed. My goodness, I love the story of this. Excuse me, could you please silence the clock? <gasps> and there's the clock thing about how it probably it bothers River. The ticking really bothers her. It's not that severe. I'll be okay. No problem. It's standard policy. If there's anything at all that makes you uncomfortable, just let me know. See? And things like that. Like, he really did try. You know, with what he knew and what resources he had. Thank you. Huh. I guess that explains the ones in the house. I was a dumb dumb about a lot of things that were probably obvious, but I was pretty proud of myself that I figured that out on my own about the clock ticking. The clock ticking was probably pretty obvious to people as well, but just a little bit longer. They'll be calling for you soon. And there's the platypus again. Stuffed toy platypus. I can't believe this piece of atrocity is dated all the way back here. Looks like someone took good care of it. She's still got pretty bad taste in animals, though. Okay. Alright, so that's the memento. So we need one more thing here. Oh, I wanted to check the note really quick. <laughs> now it's changed to Dr. Neil Watts, a pretty cool guy. I love that depending on who I'm controlling, it changes. Just little things like that. I'm just... Oh, I'm... I... Plain tawny handbag. Alright, there we go. Alright, I think this will be the last... Uh, last jump back I do for this episode. That was quite a big reveal. I am uh, I'm glad we finally caught a concrete answer on that. But there's so many other things. There's that little hint about the rabbit, about the roadkill, but I doubt that that's the real reason she's obsessed with rabbits. Then there's the platypus. There's still a lot of things that I don't know yet, but I love that it slowly is unveil uh, unveiling itself. And you can kind of put the pieces together if, you know, depending, but... Like, they give you they give you all, they lay everything out for you, and then you just kind of, you can figure it out yourself, or it's revealed to you. I really like that. Look. I know. I can't believe he once paid to see this crap in the theater. No, you idiot. Look, we leaked. Oh, he's like a child. Or maybe not a child, but like teenager. Holy overcooked macaroni. The kid's in the theater all by himself. What a loser. You go to the theater by yourself all the time. That's different. No one's common enough to match my taste. But that aside, how could anyone last through this rubbish? And thus, this movie sucks on both physical and meta uh, metaphysical levels. Q-E-D. Come on, let's go. What? Oh, right. Whoa, wait. I ain't talking to no emo teenager. Grammar, my dear Watson. Shut up, that's not even a full sentence. Let's just go look for mementos. I still ain't talking to no emo teenager. I 
I don't know if making all these people disappear... Oh, what are you doing? That's a third person you've removed here. That's what I was wondering. I'm like, am I... Is there any purpose to me doing that? Eh, not like it's permanent. Nope. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. Do I get, like, an achievement <laughs> if I remove all these people? Like, there's, there's gotta be a reason for me to be able to do this. Other than Eva's just playing God right now and she's just smiting people. You know that poking them out of the way like that does nothing, right? Then why complain? I'm also doing it just to see, you know, like, what Neil's gonna say if I just keep removing more and more people. Okay, looks like there's nothing else really here. Getting stood up? Now that's a Kodak moment. You relate well with your kin, I see. <laughs> I'm guessing it has something to do with... You know, either... This must be with River. Either she changed her mind, she got scared, and she didn't end up showing up, or like... I don't know. Well, there's nothing here. Hate to say it, but I guess I have to nag something out of him again. All yours. At least there's no olives this time. Oh. Oh, she did show up. They must have missed each other or something. Or did she go in the wrong theater? No, that's the same theater he came out of. River? You were in there this whole time? Or was the thing that's like he invited her to go to the movies, but so she's like, well, you didn't say anything about us sitting together. You just said if I want to go to the movie. I waited for you at the lobby. I thought you didn't come. Why did you leave? I thought we were watching the movie together. <laughs> so it literally was just like, well, you said you want to watch a movie with me, but it didn't necessarily have to be sitting together to watch it. Huh? I'm the one who should ask that. What do you mean? We were watching the movie together, and then you left. We weren't watching it together. I didn't even know where you were. If you saw me in there, why didn't you come and find me? What difference does it make? We were watching the same movie in the same room. <laughs> well, obviously he found something about her he liked, considering that they got married. What's wrong? You're so weird. Do you not want to watch the movie together anymore? Of course I do. Come, let's head back in before it ends. I feel like I should make a clever remark. You feel wrong. Well, let's hope our ride's waiting for us in there. Oh, and she brought the platypus with her. Wonder if he made a remark about that. Alright, so before I uh, jump back in time once again, I think I should wrap it up because I know if I do, I'm just going to want to keep playing because I am loving the story and I just want to see what happens next, but I do have to stop at some point. So, uh, pretty big reveal about uh, River having Asperger's, so that was, uh, I feel like that answers a lot of questions, but the one big question that has not been answered yet is what is the deal with the rabbits? I don't think the roadkill was the true reason that that was just burned into her brain so much. It's got to be something else. So hopefully we'll find that out in the next episode. I am I'm so excited to to learn more about Johnny and River, and we still need to know why he wants to go to the moon. That's the big, over encompassing question. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and please stay tuned for the next one. Until next time, bye guys.